Every Christmas, millions of Americans watch the story of an overworked, struggling dad named Bob Cratchit. He works day and night every day, but still can't afford to put a Christmas dinner on the table or provide health care for his son, Tiny Tim. And let's not forget his hard boss, Ebenezer Scrooge. Well, these characters and the story have been told in so many ways. To talk more about this timeless classic, we are joined by Bill Timoney. He is the cinema analyst for Ebru Today. And always so good to talk to you. You too, Mia. And always so good to talk. This is like one of my favorite stories. It is of great. All time. Christmas Carol. Everybody loves Christmas Carol. Well, now the character of Ebenezer Scrooge is probably one of the great roles for an actor. I, I don't know if I can find one that's been played by more actors. I mean, think about it. <clears throat> everybody, community theaters, professional theaters, church groups, everybody does a version of a Christmas Carol every holiday season. So think about all those people since the uh, the story was first written in 1843. And just thousands and thousands of people have played Scrooge. And it is such a terrific character because he has so many levels and he's so memorable. It's really fascinating to see how many people have tried it. Well, let's talk about mm -hmm. why people always want to do a Christmas Carol. Because if you think about like classics, um, I don't, I don't know, East mm -hmm. of Eden or something like something. Okay. I'm trying to think of something where it's a real classic um, where you don't see people redoing it all the time because there's always got to be a fear to redo something so great. Well, sure, but you know, my, well, my cynical answer is that uh, because it was written before the 20th century, it's in public domain, so you can do it without paying anybody. <laughs> uh, but that's just being flippant. Uh, like any great work of literature, at its foundation, it's about the search for self. It's about the human condition. And the fact that Dickens ties it into the holiday season is what makes it resonate so much during this holiday. It continues every holiday season. But I think at its core, it's about somebody who has had loss. And of course, everybody alive, as you grow, you have loss. I mean, the, the act of living is failing. You can't learn without failing. And someone like Ebenezer has failed and he's decided to stay where he is and he's, he's cut off his heart from the rest of humanity. So I think that really resonates with everybody to see someone like that who has a chance at the 11th hour to still have a happy life, to still mm. contribute back into society and to help fellow humanity and will he or won't he? And I, you know, I shouldn't say he. A lot of women have played the role as well. It's been adapted for That's actresses right. too. Yeah. Well, let's also. I was also going to say that you can also identify with Bob Cratchit, the struggling dad. You know, mm -hmm. you know. So sure. he, I think everybody can kind of uh, appreciate him as well. He's trapped in a bad job. He can't leave that job, but there's no room for advancement. But he can't afford to quit the job. Sure, that's a very contemporary. I was going to say. It's, I was just going to say with the economy, <laughs> everybody identifies sure. with Bob Cratchit. Sure. But I think if you look at, I mean, one of my favorite poets is a 19th century American po uh, abolitionist poet, uh, John Greenleaf Whittier, who wrote this great line. Of all sad words of tongue and pen, the saddest are these, it might have been. We have another oh. great poet who wrote about the, lo the road less traveled. Mm -hmm. And surely that is Scrooge's story arc about the path he didn't take here or the mistake he made there or what he could have done or should have done and didn't do. And again, that's something that when you watch it, you identify with it no matter who you are, no matter what path you've taken. And that's why I think, particularly in the Alistair Sim 1951 version, when, he, when Scrooge goes to his nephews for that dramatic moment, is he going to apologize to his nephew's wife for all the years that he has neglected them and mistreated them? I think that is the emotional moment that so, so defines what a Christmas story is and or a Christmas carol. And to have in the 51 version, the partiers are singing Barbara Allen which is this great song of remorse and regret and loss. And it, it's the old not a dry eye in the house when that moment hits. Absolutely. Now, what is your favorite one? I'm, I'm guessing that you're going to say the 51 version? Well, it, it's got to be. But like a lot of people my age, it's the first one I saw. But it also is, it, at its center, there's an extraordinary performance by Alistair Sim as Scrooge. He not only nails the big stuff, but all the small stuff as well. Yes, you know, uh, empty and cold and miserly at one end, uh, happy and joyful at the other end. But his eyes have such horror, and that we're looking at it right now. It, it, there's such emptiness, and, and, and it's just so disturbing and then so fulfilling when he finally makes that transition. Um, it's hard to argue against it. And I should say that not only Sim, but Michael Horton, the great actor who played Marley, 20 years later, there's a short animated film version of A Christmas Carol, and they both reprise their roles. Oh, is that right? Very okay. differently from what they did in 51. They're doing just for voice, 
but the 51 version was made for television by guys you wouldn't expect. Chuck Jones from Bugs Bunny, Richard Williams who did some Pink Panthers, and yet it won the Academy Award for Best Short Subject Animated. Well, here's a question yeah. uh, as a cinema analyst. When mm -hmm. you have young viewers mm -hmm. that are maybe just going to be introduced to this wonderful story. That's a good question. Do, do you give them the 1951 version because they don't quite get the black and white things or do you give them somebody like George C. Scott? Well I would go even um, further in another direction because Scott is, is second to Sim in my book both of the performance and the overall production and in fact Clive Donner, who was the editor on the 51 version, is the director of the George C. Scott 84 version. Is that right? Both of them. Here's the version right and there. And there you go. Um, at its core, A Christmas Carol is a ghost story. That's Dickens' mm -hmm. subtitle for it. So it is meant to be scary. It's meant to be disturbing. Certainly the Sim version is very scary, even today. And the, the 84 version with George C. Scott and Frank Finlay, who plays Marley's ghost, is very disturbing. So for younger children, I would say go to something that's a little more user friendly like The Muppets. Okay. The Muppets have a great version of it and Michael Caine gives an excellent performance to Scrooge in that. All right, so there's something for everyone of every age. Oh, sure. Love the story. Can't wait to watch it tonight. It's one of my traditions. <laughs> Me too. Always so great to see you. Great Happy to see holidays you too. and we'll see you back in the new year. Thank you so much. <laughs>